There's a line in the New Testament, it will not, what will profit a man if he gains the entire world and loses his soul? And, um, and um, you know, I think it's often framed as a general statement, but I of, I've often wondered whether it had like an actual specific referent. And uh, you know, the specific uh, classical referent of the person who conquered the whole world was Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, and there is something numerological about the number 33, they, uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, there's, uh, I think it was the 33rd chapter of the 33rd book of Livy, where Livy talks about the 33-year-old conqueror enters this triumphant city. Mm -hmm. It's Alexander entering Babylon just before he dies, and you have sort of these cheering crowds. So there is sort of this, uh, this very, uh, very, deep, uh, very deep parallel between uh, uh, sort of Alexander versus Christ right, right. parallel. Um, and you know, I do think uh, I do think Christianity somehow says that uh, that uh, the life of Alexander ended in failure, and that is uh, that's like an incredible indictment that it uh, mm -hmm. it makes. It's like, well, you know, he might have conquered the world, but then he still died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and um, and to some extent, you know, that is you know that is the world we. You know, we live. We all live in. Yeah, but that, you know, I mean, that's that's fascinating, and I confess I'd completely forgotten that stuff about living. I, sh I want to go back home and look it up. It's really interesting. But the Alexander story still dominated over the next 300 years until the time of Jesus, so that all the little Hellenistic princelings who came in his wake were still telling their own story as though they might have a chance of being at least a, a small version of Alexander. And what Paul does in Philippians is to take the way they told that story of arriving at imperial power and retell that with Jesus as the hero, but instead of conquering the world, dying on a cross as being the central thing. And it's as though Paul is saying specifically, yeah, okay, we now have a Roman emperor rather than a Greek one, Alexander, but it's the same truth, that Jesus is Lord and Caesar isn't. And uh, that's, that's a whole strand in the New Testament which does precisely pick up the Alexander thing, and which I think many Christians have not come to terms with.